okay, this next review video will cover uh, aspects of virtual instrument tracks. Um, we're going to talk about recording MIDI data using the keyboard at your workstation. Once we record, we can then quantize, uh, show you the MIDI editing window. We will probably change up some of the virtual instruments. For customization, we will change some of the track colors. And then uh, something that I probably should have mentioned when I was doing the audio track review is how to change the metronome settings, um, the count in measures that you would use before recording, the metronome clicks as you are recording, and then metronome clicks as you're playing back. So I'll cover all of that here with the virtual instrument track uh, video. Um, I'm just going to start a new project, open the Mixcraft to our new project settings window. I'm going to put two instrument tracks on here, no audio tracks, 120 beats per minute, keep C major 4-4, four, four. click OK. Okay, so I have a simple uh, setup here, just two instrument tracks. Um, you know what, before I start recording, I'm just going to touch up on the metronome settings first because that's usually what we should get set before we start recording. So when I click the metronome icon down here on the bottom, um, I'm given three little check boxes. One to play the click while you're playing back what you recorded. One click that plays as you are recording. And then you also have the option of giving yourself count in measures so that when you click record, you can get your hands to where they need to be on the piano before the actual recording starts. Um, I don't want playback, but I do want it to click while I'm recording, and I do want two measures uh, clicks before I start recording. So I'll click OK. Um, I'm just going to record a simple, uh, you know, four measures. All right. So if I click the record button down here in the bottom left, I'm going to get two full measures of count in should be eight clicks total and then you'll see the red recording start here okay Two. okay a little bit longer than four measures but i made a little mistake in here some of these notes aren't really shifted the right way, uh, whatever. Okay. Um, so let's talk about MIDI editing. Right now, what I have are a bunch of whole notes. And what I can do with this is because I'm recording MIDI data, I've recorded the length of the note. I've recorded the specific pitch. Okay, um, and then in this case too, I've also recorded the specific velocity or the how loud or soft I've played those notes. Um, the only thing I didn't record here is uh, sustained notes where the pedal comes up and down. Um, but with MIDI data, what I am able to do, I can make some of these notes shorter, I can make them longer. Um, and then with quantizing, uh, here, I'm going to redo this, and I'm not going to follow the click. The click's still going to be there, but I'm going to intentionally mess up for a second. So watch what happens when I don't follow the click. Okay, so what I have here are a bunch of notes that are now shifted off of where the downbeat is, right? So this, all of these should be shifted over to this thick line where the start of measure two, oop, let me drop that again, where the start of measure two is, okay? So if I go to MIDI editing and I quantize, if I quantize to the nearest start time eighth note, what might happen is because I was so late that it'll shift to the next eighth note, but I want whole notes, okay? Because I was playing whole notes, so. If I click OK, most likely this will shift to the beginning of the measure, but let's see. 
Yeah. So everything shifted back to the start of each measure. So it should be nice and clean now. Um, and then I do believe I played a wrong note somewhere. So let's say I'm trying to get rid of this note E. I can just click on it and remove it. Or if I wanted this to be a G7 chord, um, I can probably just draw in a B flat here. Or I'm sorry, a C7 chord. Um, you know, and then I can I can make them shorter and longer or actually click and drag them and move them around where I need them. Um, so that's, that's the MIDI editing. And then the last thing I guess is if I wanted to change the track color, um, let's say I want track one to be, uh, let's see, I gotta go to properties, color, and I want track, oops, track one, I wanna be orange. I'll keep track two blue. Now let's say I don't wanna keep this piano sound because uh, right now this is what it sounds like. Instead of having to re-record with a new instrument sound, all I have to do is go into the instrument, I guess you call it instrument library, and you can search by categories. So let's say I'm looking for some sort of acoustic guitar, um, a six string acoustic guitar sound. I'm gonna mute the piano because all I wanna hear is the guitar. Okay, and then I can change the second track to some type of bass sound, acoustic bass. Oh, we gotta unmute it. Okay, and that's uh, pretty much all you're going to need to know about the virtual instruments.